do I have any lessons to share on the use of P3M3? I think the first lesson to share on the use of P3M3 is to get the scope right. Um, it's the, you know, the, the good answer to any question is to ensure you get the right question in the first place. And, and that really is true for P3M3. You know, and getting the scope of your assessment right first means that you'll get uh, most value out of the results from the assessment. And by scope, I mean, do you assess all of your organisation? Or do you assess just part of your organisation? Do you do it for all project types or just some project types? Do you do the project model only or do you do the program model or do you do the portfolio model? Getting these scoping aspects right first means that you'll get more value from the results from the assessment. The second tip, if you like, in terms of using P3M3 is to get the right people involved. Um, there's no point in, uh, in getting the wrong people to uh, be available for interviews or for workshops. Uh, and also getting perhaps um, two junior people involved in some of the workshop means that you don't necessarily get the senior stakeholder buy-in for any improvements that you may wish to make later on. Likewise, just having only senior people involved in interviews and workshops means you might get a bit of the ivory tower syndrome where they're not really seeing what's happening you know, at the ground level in their organisation, so they're missing out on some of the issues and opportunities that they may have uh, with them. The third tip I would give is be prepared to do something with the results. There's nothing worse, uh, potentially, than, uh, if you like, warming your organisation up that you've brought in some assessors to identify your strengths and weaknesses and you're going to get a report making recommendations to then do nothing with it. It's almost like saying, we don't care. You know, we've, we've got these issues and we're going to do nothing. So be prepared to follow up uh, with some form of improvement or communications about what your organisation is going to do now you've had the assessment. The assessment itself doesn't deliver change. It's what you do with the results that delivers change. And the third one would be, uh, sorry, the fourth tip would be then to uh, prove the effects that the changes you're making uh, actually have had on your organisation. So if you're going to put some changes in place, perhaps schedule a repeat assessment in say a year's time or 18 months time so that you can verify the improvements you've made just as important, you can then think about what are the next steps of improvements that, that can be made. So if you've gone from, say, a level two organisation to level three, your reassessment should be saying, what can we do to get to level four? That continual approach to improving capabilities at the heart of P3M3.